This is Adult Science, Volume 24. It was released in Japan in June 2009 by Gakken. Adult Science is a MOOC, or magazine book. This unique format combines a magazine with a substantive cover item, allowing the reader to explore the topic in more depth. Volume 24 was about the rise of the microcomputer and explores with the reader how computers actually work. To support that understanding, this edition comes with the GMC4, a 4-bit microcomputer. Inside the cover, we see a colourful illustration and infographic about the GMC4, which is contained in this part of the MOOC here, where it's labelled as the Gakken Microcomputer 4-bit. We'll explore this later in the video. Turning forward, we can see a magazine that comprises part of the MOOC. Now, usually this would be adhered with a gentle adhesive along the spine here, but after 15 years, mine has come loose. If we move that out of the way, we can see the back cover includes a quick reference card for the GMC4, and if you've seen my video on the FX computer, this will look very familiar to you. Finally, on the back of the MOOC, we can see this advert for a Pioneer audio system, but more importantly, we can see the price. So the MOOC would have originally retailed for 2,500 yen back in 2009. Before we explore the GMC4 itself in more depth, let's have a closer look at the magazine. The front cover shows some macro photography of a microprocessor, including the delicate bond wires that connect the CPU die to the legs of the chip, or in this case, the traces on the PCB. Inside the magazine, we see previous editions of Adult Science, including their various accessories. And we see the contents for this particular edition. The magazine begins by exploring the Intel 4004 and the Intel 8080 CPU, which powered the Altair computer. If you'd like to learn more about the Altair, I have a video on a reproduction of that exact system. On the left here we see some Japanese computers, including the TK80 from NEC, the LK8 from Fujitsu, the H68 from Hitachi. On the right we have American computers, including the PET from Commodore, the Apple II, and the TRS-80 from Tandy Radio Shack. At the bottom there is a call-out box about the ASCII magazine, a Japanese magazine about computer technology. We then go on to look at some Japanese computers. This includes examples such as the Nintendo Game & Watch and the Nintendo Famicom. The Famicom, or Family Computer, was released in the West as the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. We then have an article about Japanese kit computers, some computers that are interesting to collectors, and further details about these machines. We then see some computers that might be more familiar to Western audiences, including the Milton Bradley Microvision, the Atari 800, the Kim One, a technology demonstration board for the 6502 processor from Moz Technology. If you'd like to learn more about the 6502, I have a video on the 6502 and programming with resistors and diodes. We also have the Vectrex, which was an interesting games console with a vector-based display. And for British readers, we have the Sinclair QL, the ill-fated successor to Sinclair's popular ZX81 and ZX Spectrum microcomputers. We then have some die shots of the Intel 4004 and the Intel 8080 that we saw earlier in the magazine. As well as some progress of Intel microcomputers from 1970 through to 2010. Here we see the first example of a project with the GMT4, and this is by the editor of ASCII magazine. Once you've assembled your GMC4, you can program in this particular program if you'd like to do so. We also have examples of connecting the GMC4 up to external hardware, including the Minimoog, which was another product available from Gakken. Then we have a more basic but more accessible program, 
This one includes a persistence of vision example where you can program in various LED light patterns and as you move the device backwards and forwards, you see the image projected in free air. In this example, we have the Gacken logo and a example of a heart icon. There's also a call out box about an assembler for the GMC4, which makes it easier to write the code in the mnemonics and convert it to code you can enter on the device. Finally, we have a quite advanced project about creating a GMC4 robot. This combines Gacken's tea carrying doll with a GMC4 to provide a robotic device that can move around the room. The program listing required is provided here. The magazine then goes on to look at the prehistory of computing before the digital era, including things such as Abacus's and Napier Bones, Pascal's Calculator, and Babbage's Difference Engine. We then move on from the 18 to 1900s, looking at things such as IBM machines and the ENIAC. The next article is about how computers work on a basic level, including some abstraction to the hardware. Finally, the magazine considers the binary or base two number system, how that compares to hex, which is used with the GMT4, and the decimal system that we are all familiar with today. The article goes on to explain and or not gates, as well as conceptualizing binary as switches that are on and off. If you'd like to learn more about this basic level of computing, about thinking about computers as switches, I have a video about programming with switches and wires that you might find interesting, featuring the Tandy Science Fair Digital Computer Kit. The article continues on to explain addition before finally moving forward to assembly of the GMC4 itself. There are then operating instructions for the GMT4, and I'm going to flick through those quite quickly here, as we'll visit them in more detail in a moment. As you can see, there are various program listings that you can enter into the machine. Finally, there's a nice article about the FXR165, or the FX computer. I featured this in a previous video if you'd like to learn more about this, including the English language version that was released in the West. There's then some computer column articles, so these are examples of the kind of write-in feature you would see in ASCII magazine, and it shows an example of connecting the GMC4 to the electronic blocks kits that you may have also seen in previous videos. Finally, there is a story here about the use of the wire recorder that was available in volume 23, nicely illustrated by these pictures of some dogs. An advert for Analog Magazine, and then some details of additional accessories that you might find interesting, including the tea carrying doll that was featured in one of the earlier projects. Finally, we have a reader survey, an advert for the upcoming volume 25, which was about 35 millimeter cameras. And finally, on the back cover, that advert for the Pioneer audio equipment. Part of the reason that I have skipped through the assembly and operation instructions for the GMC4 there quite quickly is that Gacken had provided a summary and English translation of those instructions on their website in PDF format. I've gone ahead and downloaded and printed those out for us to look through right now. As you can see, there are details on assembly instructions and the fact that you will need a number one Phillips screwdriver to tighten some screws. Once we've gone ahead and assembled the unit, there are details about what the parts of the unit are called, basic operating instructions, some nice detail about how the GMC4 works, including the microcontroller or central processing unit that is used on the device. And in this case, you can see it here before they've coated it with a black resin. There are then details of the various types of program execution you can carry out, as well as some details about the built-in programs. My favorite is the hit the mole or whack-a-mole game, 
which was called rat bashing in the original translation for the FX computer. There's then details about the command structure for writing your own programs, and a couple of example programs that you can look at. To see more details about these, of course, refer to the flowcharts and diagrams in the original Japanese version of the magazine. So I think it's about time we took a closer look at the GMT-4 itself. Now this unit was imported from Japan and is now over 15 years old. So you can see the tape here has come away with age. But if I open the box and pull out the insert, we can see that our GMC4 is in the original polystyrene and even the original shrink wrap. So let's peel back the plastic and bring the GMC4 to life. So as you saw, I had a few issues there. The first being that 15 year old adhesive no longer adheres. The problem there is that it had dried out entirely. So I went ahead and scraped off all of the old adhesive off of the plastic plate and then used some Pritt stick. So I usually use Pritt stick as low tack adhesive in these kind of situations and that was perfectly fine. I dried it out with a hairdryer as you saw. But unfortunately, I managed to misalign the front plate slightly, and so it was causing a short. So just out of the camera's viewpoint there, I peeled it off, cleaned the pad slightly, and um, reapplied. So I am using Pritt stick here, and that is how I am having these buttons adhere. And as you saw, I am now able to step through all of the keys. And of course, I can reset. I can do an address set and then I can increment through, which just simply increments through the addresses. And I should be able to run, but we will check that in just one second. So if we look through the manual, there are a few games that are built into the system or programs that are built in. And these are the same as on the original FX computer. But as I mentioned earlier, my favorite is the Hunt the Mole game. And to run that, we just have to press reset, C and run. Following that, we choose the speed which the game will play at, and then we need to press the appropriate key from 0 to 6 to match the lit LED. So let's give that a go. So reset, C, and run. And now it's waiting for us to choose a speed. I'm going to choose speed 0, and then it's going to show me the LED I need to press. And that's 0, and that's 6 but I was too slow, and that's two, and five, and four, and three, and zero, and six. And there you go, I got seven out of the 10 rats, or moles. 
Uh, rat bashing is the a name from the FX computer translation. So I'm just pressing the numbers that are illuminating under the LEDs, and we can press run to play the same game again. And that time we got all 10, and so we see a hexadecimal A, which means 10, or as I like to think of, ACE. Now, as I mentioned, you can program your own programs into this device, and there are instructions for doing that. Now, to do that, all we need to do is reset the device, and we can set the address we would like to target. Uh, so here, that's targeting address zero, but I could target any other address I like as well to enter data. And there are a few programs in the manual that might be interesting. But one of the ones that I thought was short and fun is the random number music generator, and that seems like it could be quite entertaining. So all we need to do is at address zero, so we can reset, and we can explicitly set the address if we choose to do so by zero, zero, and address set, but we don't need to reset, we'll set us back to address zero anyway. Then we need to enter the command code, B, and we press increment to save it and move to the next address. One, increment, six, increment, four, increment, E, increment, B, increment, F, increment, zero, increment, and zero, increment. We can reset, and now we can see that B is in position zero, zero. The LEDs here indicate the position. B, and we can just increment through this to make sure everything's correct. Then we have a one, and a six, and a four, and an E, and a B, and an F, and a zero, and a zero. So now we can reset, and we can press one, and this sets the run mode, and we can press run. Okay, so that's kind of fun. It seemed like it was playing a scale at the beginning there, but afterwards it became a bit more random. And the way this program is working, it's drawing a memory location using the Y register. It's incrementing the memory at that location. It's storing that back to the memory. It's calling the sound command, and then it's jumping back to the beginning. And so it's going through and it's incrementing each value by six there, which causes a pseudo random number generation, and that is being played out as tones. Now, there are many more things that you can do with the GMC4, and plenty more for you to explore. But for now, I think that's something that I'm going to leave to you. So what I'm going to do is leave a link to a web-based emulator of this device in the video description, along with a link to the instructions from Gacken to get you started. Do let me know what you come up with in the comments. So for now, I hope you found this video interesting, and I hope to speak to you again soon in the next one.